Good morning. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. Please share with one another God's peace. Again, happy Easter to everyone. And for those of you who are joining us online, our service today begins on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer, or in the bulletin that you were able to download from our website. Hallelujah! Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah! Together, Almighty God, you all hearts are open, all desires known. And from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Together, glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, <clears throat> who through your only begotten Son, overcame open to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that we, who celebrate with joy the day of our Lord's resurrection, may be raised with the, from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of God's holy word. Technical difficulties of reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
the psalm appointed for today is Psalm 118, verses 1 through 2 and 14 through 24. We will say this in unison, Psalm 118. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim, his mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song. He is the crown of salvation. There is a sound of exaltation and victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord shall triumph. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord is triumph. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely, but do not hand me over to death. Open the gates of gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you for your hand to me, and I found my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and his mouth is in our eyes. On this day the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Paul, called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and our brother Sosthenes, to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, together with all those who in every place call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him, you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, 
We have taken the, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and to your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Lord. Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Amen. Be seated. What? Howard, you're looking at me funny. What? Oh, I should say a little more than that. But I mean, today we celebrate the Lord, the resurrection of our Lord. What, what else is there to say? Then he is risen. In a perfect world, acknowledging our risen Lord would be more than enough. But I get it. We hear that all the time, don't we? For some, today is just another day to say it. Oh sure, we get to say hallelujahs again after a long season of Lent, but truth be known, many of you were saying it under your breath the whole season. Because that's what we do. We give thanks. That our Lord, crucified and buried, has overcome the power of death and opened for us a door, the gate, if you will, to eternal life. Where we know our sins are forgiven and our joy is made complete. However, for many, Easter, like birthdays, while exciting to celebrate in the beginning, the more and more we do, the more and more our special day becomes like any other. And it gets harder and harder to stir up that excitement, that enthusiasm we once had. I mean, it's not that the church doesn't try. We overly decorate. We have special music and hymns. We wear colorful and, and festive liturgical wear. Yet despite all the hype, our hearts are not moved by the story central to our faith. 
Maybe this is because the readings we hear this day are the ones we hear year after year after year. Before long, we get more excited about the Easter egg hunt or the family dinner that is to follow than we do the message of Jesus' resurrection. I mean, the songs we sing are lifting. The hymns we use, though, are always the same. And how many times can you hear me say the same thing in a different way? How can we bring the excitement we once had back to when we first heard and believed the story Scripture tells us? I don't have an answer. Because the problem that we face is that what excites each of us is different. Add to this the ever-changing nature of what we find exciting leaves us in a bit of a quandary. We know what we are supposed to celebrate. We know that we are supposed to celebrate. But how? That's the question. Do we do so focusing on the good news? Which most everyone has heard a dozen times at least. Or do we try to find a new way to get that adrenaline within us pumping? The danger with either option is, if we say the same thing over and over and over, we just begin to sound like a broken record. And what may be adrenaline to you might be melatonin to you. Wouldn't it be great if we could find a way to bring these things together at the same time? I think there's a way, not liturgically maybe, but still we might be able to do it through our worship. And we begin by doing this. Not expecting someone else to energize us. It must come through us. Our hearts, our minds. If we want to be excited about something, and and I believe the resurrection is something we really need to be excited about, then we must let go of those things that hold us back. Grab onto that which allows that percolating energy within us to build and multiply. Like Peter in the the apostle that Jesus loved, we need to get up and move. We need to let go of the reins that we have on the Spirit and let the Spirit lead us to that place where the joy of the good news is overflowing. Where nothing can contain the love that we sense. In that moment we hear Like Mary, the Lord call our name. Maybe it is in the prayers we use, the decorations that adorn the church, the hymns we sing, or the music we hear. Or maybe it's in the act of communion, coming together where we hear our name called and feel the overpouring of God's love surrounding and and filling us with a joy that is almost indescribable. Whatever it is for you, for you, for you, for me, we need to reach out and grab hold of it. Just as Mary reached out to grab hold of the robes of Jesus. This past Lent, I've encouraged us to create a silence in our lives. To listen for what God might be saying to us about how we might share God's love more fully with those we encounter along our faith journey. While I was hopeful we might learn or relearn how to serve one another or those in our community better, the real purpose behind this exercise was to help us 
Begin to listen. Listen in ways and places we might not have otherwise. To hear the voice of the Lord call our name. I know this idea can seem a little daunting. I mean, face it. If the Lord calls our name and we hear it, I mean, we got examples throughout Scripture. That ain't a good thing. We might be asked to do something. And I know most people here don't want to become missionaries. I know that you don't want to be ordained. But neither are many really ready to give more of themselves, their, li their, their, their lives, their time, their talents, their treasures. Most people like the lives they live and aren't really ready for the Lord to upset that proverbial apple cart. So we keep our lives busy. We keep that volume turned right on up. Just in case the Lord calls our name. I hate to break the bubble, folks. None of that works. If the Lord wants our attention, the Lord's going to get it. Simply by calling our name when we least expect it. Mary didn't expect to meet Jesus there in the garden. Hearing her name, her grief and, and her fear turned to amazement, realizing he is actually there. And what does he ask her to do once she hears her name? To simply go and tell those she knows what she has seen and heard. Her to share the joy she found in the moment with someone else. He asks us to do the same, knowing that energy begets more energy. One reason we come together each week, one reason we celebrate the, the events in his life, is so that we might come together in the quietness our worship affords to hear him calling our name. Like Mary, we might not really come to this place expecting to hear the Lord speak to us, expecting to have an encounter with the Lord. But like Mary, when we look, when we listen, we find He's right here, calling our name, inviting us to share what He has shared with us, God's love. When was the last time we shared with someone the joy we experience in our encounter with the risen Lord? Here in our worship? Or through the ministries in which we serve? Or through the many people and places where and through whom the voice of the Lord breaks through the noise that surrounds us? My people roll their eyes as Peter most likely did when Mary came and told him that news? Sure. But like Peter, maybe they will become so moved by what we have to say that they will get up to go see for themselves and seeing what we see, hearing what we hear, believe. Believe in their hearts, in their minds, the good news that we proclaim so boldly this day. News that has the power to change lives. Hallelujah! Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Amen. Continuing on page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer, please stand as we affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, 
Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God to God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified, Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are form two, page 385. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Scott, our bishop, Tom, our priest, Terry, our aspirant for the diaconate. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Church of Pakistan united, in the diocesan cycle of prayer, please pray for the Church of Resurrection, Omaha, Reverend Tony Anderson, Archdeacon Betsy Blake Bennett, Deacon Juanita Johnson, Deacon Joan Wood, the Benedictine Way, James Dowd, OSB, Jerry Thompson, OSB, St. Benedictine's Ministries, and the doctor, and in the DR, Holy Spirit Church, St. Martha's Church, in the parish cycle of prayer, we pray for those who seek Christ, for this gathering and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for our President Joe Biden, our Governor Pete Ricketts, and for all the elected and appointed officials in the communities in which we live and around the world. I ask your prayers for peace, for the goodwill among all nations and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor and the destitute, for the sick and the hungry, and those who struggle to survive. And for those in prison, pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for the departed, especially Jesse G, Jim B. Are there any others? Pray for those who have died. In our own congregation, I ask for your prayers that God stays with and strengthens all who are ill, especially Shirley S., Kevin L., Tony S., Maureen C., Nancy B., Chris K., John M., Elon M., Crystal K. Are there any others? I ask your prayers to lift up those with special concerns, especially Angela, Charles, Martha, Prokish, the Bowers family, the Gross family, the people of Ukraine and Russia. Are there any others? I ask your prayers 
and remembrance today for those who have served our country at home and abroad, especially those in harm's way. Sarah F., Jonathan P., are there any others? Be with them and your, their families, Lord, to give them comfort and hope until they are once again reunited in peace. Watch over those in our community who travel. Are there any to mention at this time? Keep them safe as only you can, Lord. We ask that you continue to pour out your blessings on those who are celebrating birthdays this week, especially Alex G., Jonathan P., Glenna M., Chris G., Logan S. Are there any others? And those celebrating anniversaries, are there any to mention at this time? Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. O oh Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For your gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have not done done. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your world and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Almighty God, whose will it is to hold both heaven and earth in the peace of your kingdom, give peace to your church, peace among nations, peace in our homes, and peace in our hearts. All this we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us in offering and sacrifice to God.
Our service continues with Eucharistic Prayer A, found on page 361 in the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is me in thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. Please stand. He stretched out his arms upon the cross, and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and ending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us. 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on them in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving.
Continuing on page 366 in the Book of Common Prayer, let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Please be seated for our announcements. Cindy, yes or no? I'll do it because I get the microphone. Thank you. All right, I just got an update. First announcement is going to be the Easter egg hunt, but we've had some rain out there. Cindy feels that the grass is a little, a little bit dangerous for the kids. So here's what we're going to do. We don't want anybody not to find chocolate somewhere on the church grounds. So next week, Sunday, when our youth kind of come in and take over the church and lead us through worship, we're going to do it then. Is that right, Cindy? Yeah. So I think we're going to wait for next Sunday. All right. Um, and if, if not next Sunday, if we have bad weather again, then we're going to do our last resort. We'll do it somewhere inside the church. Scary thought. All right. Uh, moving right along here. <laughs> This coming Saturday, we have a mobile pantry here. Um, it is open to anyone who has need for uh, groceries. Uh, we will be running that pantry from 9.30, or, excuse me, from 10 a.m. till 11.30. And anyone who wishes to volunteer, please be here at 9.30. I already mentioned it, next Sunday is Youth Sunday. I'll be helping doing all the readings and serving, helping with the chalice. They will be uh, ushers, greeters, everything that they possibly can. And a special treat, we have a member of our youth who is going to help share leading the message for Sunday. I'm looking forward to that, Ben. <laughs> oh, I'm looking forward. All right, moving on. Um, <laughs> in two weeks, on, on Wednesday the 27th, uh, our Journeys Youth Group will be holding their crossing service on Wednesday evening at 6.30, or excuse me, at 7 p.m., if you wish to join us for that, please feel free to do so. Um, we mark the end of our uh, program year with our youth in a special service. Um, Red Cross. Um, you know that we can had to cancel our last blood drive because they had personnel shortages. They have assured us this time that we are okay, and we have got it rescheduled for the 15th of, or 14th of May. Um, the link is here. Just go to the Red Cross website. Punch in our zip code, 68005, scroll down the list, you will find our church, and you will find times that you can pick that work with your schedule. Last time we had the schedule full, so we're hoping to refill it again. If you have any questions about the blood drive, please see Carol. Carol, you want to wave over there? Okay. See Carol after the service, and she'll be glad to answer any other questions. Let's see, birthdays and anniversaries. Well, I know we got at least one person here that's got a birthday. Let's see, who, where's the other, John? Oh, John's here, yes. And, let's see, and Lex. Yes, Lex. They missed, they, they, they caught me off guard. They had Alex G. Or is this Alex, oh no, that, that's Alex Gomringer. And your birthday's up this time too, Christian? All right, come on down. All right, John, how about coming on down? Are there any other birthdays or anniversaries that didn't make it into the bulletin? Hmm. 
Please join me in the birthday prayer. Oh God, our times are in your hands. Look with favor, we pray, on these your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday, my friend. How old is she? 22. At least 19, right, John? God bless. Happy birthday. Plus a few. I got you. <laughs> go forth in the name of Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.